they're the most loyal people you will ever meet once you earn their trust. But because they're often the ones supporting you, we don't really talk enough about how we can best support them. So here are five ways to show the Enneagram type six in your life that you care. Number one, send in the clowns, but um, not literally because some people find clowns terrifying. Not me, I took a clowning course in college and my dad was a clown for one of my birthday parties. He was Quest of the Clown and I still am delighted by that fact. However, there's a reason why movies like It exist, but all that to say, what I'm trying to say is that most sixes have an incredible sense of humor. And I think you kind of have to when you're always prepping for the worst case scenario, like you've got to be able to laugh a little bit. In fact, it's a theory I have about sixes. Being so attuned to the darkness in the world also makes you incredibly aware and appreciative of the light. But when sixes are anxious, that joyful nature disappears behind a million worries. And anxiety is actually something that sixes really struggle with. That's where laughter can come in. And I'm not saying to just brush off their anxiety. I, I think it's really important to honor what sixes are feeling. But while you're doing that, because two things can be true at once, keep a lighthearted air in your conversations, right? If you guys have an inside joke, bring that in. Tell a silly joke, invent a character. I, I think that bringing in that levity, that lightness can be really helpful for sixes. Also, laughter is scientifically proven to be a stress reliever. So I'm not going to argue with the science there. Let's, let's all laugh a little bit more. But if you're bringing in levity without understanding this next tip about type sixes, it's going to be really hard to have a long and healthy relationship with your type six. See, it's important to understand why sixes feel so anxious in the first place. Their core desire is to feel like they have a firm foundation beneath their feet. And this could be like relationally, it could be financially, or if you live in earthquake prone California like me, even physically. So to put this in perspective, let me ask you this. Have you ever had someone promise to do something, but then they don't follow through? That sense of disappointment and never being able to fully rely on someone is exhausting. And it plays right into the core fear of a type six that they will not be able to rely on you for stability or support. This can result in a six doing everything themselves because they feel like they can't trust anyone else to do it. The solution here and the way that you can love them better is to be consistent with what you say you're gonna do. Show up when you need to show up, make your words and actions a sure thing. This, perhaps more than any other tip in this video, is going to strengthen your relationship. But there's a mistake that a lot of people make with sixes and I'm ashamed to say that I have made this mistake many, many times. One instance that still makes me cringe happened when I was in high school. So in the summers, I worked at this dinosaur science camp for kids, which sounds super fancy, but really it was just a bunch of kids running around and digging for fossils in a sandbox that we had buried like an hour before. But at the end of the summer, we finally did get to do something cool, throw a big end of summer bash. Even more exciting, we had a budget. So of course, like the amazing teenagers we were, we were like, Let's get this giant blow up bouncy house and obstacle course. And oh, bonus points because it was shaped like a stegosaurus. So it fit the theme and it was a dinosaur. So awesome. But we had one guy on our team, Dave, who I'm absolutely positive was an Enneagram type six. He argued passionately against getting the expensive bouncy house. I cannot tell you how annoyed I was with this guy. Cause he was insisting that we rent a bunch of tables and boring tents so it could cover the food tables and the craft tables if it rained. But I grew up in Southern California. That's where the camp was. And it's notorious for never raining. Also, it was summer. So what the heck? Obviously we shot down his Debbie Downer idea and sprung for the fun option. Now fast forward to the day of the summer bash and yep, you guessed it, we had summer showers. Guess what 60 sugar high children screaming in terror as they run from a collapsing bounce house sounds like? 
it's not pleasant. <laughs> it was at that moment that I learned we need risk averse thinkers. If we had just listened to Dave and gave him the time of day, we would have been so much more prepared to give these kids a satisfying end of camp experience. And that's the thing, sixes have probably thought through things 100 times more than you. As part of the head triad in the centers of intelligence, and if you don't know what that is, I'll link a video explaining that here, but sixes are in the head triad and they react to life primarily through mental analysis. This means they're constantly on the lookout for things that might make them unsafe. And while this quality makes them fantastic troubleshooters, it also fosters a lot of worry. Keeping that in mind, I find it really helpful to show sixes love by reminding them, hey, it's okay to be anxious. It's literally your body's way of keeping you safe. But, and there's a ray of hope here, this feeling of anxiety won't always be so overpowering. As we grow older and wiser, we hopefully find tools to help us manage those feelings. For example, therapy can be really healing for sixes, as well as meditation, yoga, and just getting out into nature. And honestly, this all boils down to one core concept. Make sure your six knows that they are not alone. Because the thing is, sixes go out of their way to make sure other people don't feel alone. I always picture sixes as like the sole person in the stands of a sports game and it's like the worst sports team ever and it's pouring rain and they're just losing horribly but they're still there, they're with the foam finger, they're cheering, they're like the one fan in the stands. Sixes are that ride or die person. It reminds me of something John and I said in our marriage vows and it's probably my absolute favorite thing that we did put into our vows. But in front of our friends and family, we promised to be each other's biggest fans, both publicly and privately. I think this is a beautiful vow for anyone to make, but tip number five is to apply this to the relationships you have with the sixes in your life. Not only is it a good rule of thumb because it strengthens the relationship, but you're not gossiping about each other and breaking down trust. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, with sixes, trust is everything. But I'm sure you know, it's not always sunshine and rainbows and sometimes you're really struggling with the hard parts of loving a type six. You know, the annoying things they do that can make it difficult to communicate and have compassion. Which is why in this next video, I break down the most difficult obstacles about being in a relationship with a type six and what to do about it.